Good evening and welcome to the live Q&A on the Growth, Profit and Sustainability Group. I'm Martin Sharp, as you know, and I'm here to answer any of your questions. So uh, please be ready to get your questions and submit them because that's what we're here for. We're here to try and answer all those questions that you have about business and about uh, how you can improve yourself to make sure that you're working at the best that you can possibly be. Uh, I'd like to say a big thank you to those I've already submitted questions. So a big thank you to Mohamed Asif and to um to then and to uh, janine who have already submitted questions into the group and we're going to look to try and answer some of those here tonight to make sure we've got those here so I'd like to give me a big thumbs up if you can hear me okay if you can see me okay i'm just making sure that we're working uh, so give me a thumbs up or a like or a hello or something in the chat box just to make you sure we're working technically tonight uh, we have had a few occasions where things have been a bit glitchy i'm hoping that's not tonight's not going to be one of them so the other thing alongside submitting their questions is um, I'd like you to think about you know who is it that you could invite into this group that will be able to benefit from being able to join us and be able to make sure that thank you very much for the thumbs up there it's greatly appreciated to see if you can actually hear us but yeah so we're looking at who else do you know that actually could benefit from being part of this group I feel like we're building a really good community here of people that are really willing to contribute and actually participate which is absolutely fantastic so I'm sure this is something that other people People can benefit from too so if you know any kind of business owners entrepreneurs or people who are potentially looking to start their their first business then please invite them along to the group and let's uh, get them to join in so they can help benefit from the kind of experience that we've got in the group already uh, we have been working with my social media team so there's gonna be some things coming on in the new year which I'm sure you guys are gonna be really excited about uh, I've also spoken to David about doing a piece for, with us as well around uh, psychometric profiling so that'll be coming in the new year as well if you guys have got a specific tool uh, uh, skill or a tool that you'd like to demo inside the live Q&A session then again feel free to let me know because I'm sure this is something we would like to try and encourage moving forward because the more that we share the more that we care the more that we actually grow together and at the end of the day we know that we don't have all the skills ourselves and we don't have to do everything alone and that's one of the key things we're going to look at here now there's two key topics we are looking at this evening as I put into the group earlier today, uh, the first of these is around productivity tools and actually thinking about actually what is it and why, why are we so wed uh, to Microsoft Office and is there an alternative? Um, and that was a question as, as posed by uh, Mohamed Asif. And the second uh, kind of key question today is all about motivation. How can we keep ourselves motivated, especially in those days where you know sometimes things don't necessarily go the way that you want it to uh, and it kind of can get you down some days. So it's how can you keep that drive how can you keep that passion and how can you just keep going even in the face of adversity some days so as uh, we said earlier one of the first topics we're going to be looking at is around uh, what other productivity tools are available as a small business owner uh, and kind of thinking about oh, what are the costs around it what are some of the pros and cons of them uh, and also what are some of the risks because sometimes we can all charge in to do something uh, thinking it's a great idea but maybe not have actually considered some of those like key risks as to why uh, other people haven't done that it's a bit like that thing you know sometimes the reason why somebody hasn't done it is because there is a problem there uh, and as much as you might like to charge in sometimes it's not always the best thing to do and the other things also also true that sometimes there's great opportunities where others dare not tread uh, so let's look at that from a, a productivity tooling point of view so uh, and anyway keep your questions coming in uh, if they do come on the news feed what I'll do is I will look to try and answer those as we go through this evening so Microsoft Office Microsoft Office is probably the de facto standard when it comes down to office productivity tools so things like using Word for writing documents uh, Excel for spreadsheets and charts um, and PowerPoint for your slides and presentations. It also comes with other tools that are included in the bundle. But we're really going to concentrate on those kind of three productivity tool areas uh, when we start looking and examining these. Now, what are the alternatives? Well, if you're looking for a piece of software that you can actually install on your computer and use when you're out and about, not just when you're on the web, then there are a number of pieces of software that are available to us. And today I'm going to remember to switch and transition the screen over. 
So one of the next tools we can look at is uh, one of the free open source tools. Now what open source means is it's a movement by which people have developed software and they make it freely available uh, to be able to use it and contribute back to it. So long as that you provide the use, you tell them who it was that actually created it in the first place. There are various different license agreements for these pieces of software and certainly it's worthwhile having a look into it. Now, as it is a free piece of software, usually support doesn't come with the software or you might have to buy a premium package to be able to get kind of support on it. Now, one of the first and probably one of the well-known pieces of open source office productivity software is OpenOffice which is part of the Apache program. And this has been going on for quite a long time. It's a very stable product. It has a good following. Uh, there's versions for it that work on Windows and on the Mac. And for those hardened computer fans out there, there's also versions that work on Linux as well. Um, thinking about other kind of software, again, that installs on your computer, another one could be LibreOffice. Now, LibreOffice was a derivative of OpenOffice originally, so it's got a very similar feel and functions, uh, and again, comes with the kind of key tools that you're looking for around a writing application, a spreadsheet type application, and something for creating your presentations or drawings. Um, moving forward, there is also another piece of software we'll look at tonight called FreeOffice, uh, which again is a free version of a uh, Office style product. It's only available for Windows is this product, but again gives you another kind of offering that you could use for those kind of three key productivity tools. Now there are other pieces of software available in the market, but Mohammed, I say if you really looked at what are the kind of the cheaper or freer options uh, in the marketplace, and these three kind of stand out for me when I was looking around to see it was available. Uh, there are other pieces of software that work out even more expensive like uh, WordPerfect, it is still available uh, and there is a whole office suite around it but at this point in time I think we'll try and look at the more uh, cost effective for side of the market let's say. <coughs> now we've looked at those products that we can install on our computers but what about products that we can just use over the internet at any point in time and there is a number of these on the market uh, probably most famous that you've all heard of is Google Docs uh, and again Google have provided their own productivity software around that around uh, around documents uh, Excel spreadsheets and around a presentation called slides and um, you've got a company called Zoho Docs uh, which may be one that you've not heard of but Zoho create a whole range of tooling uh, based on their cloud platform from the, the uh, productivity suite through to security software through to CRM software so there's a whole variety of things that come under their banner and again all delivered through a web browser so if you're you always know you're always going to have an internet connection then again this potentially might be an option for you and last but not least, uh, we have one that you may be a bit surprised to hear from a PC user, but there is the iCloud with uh, Apple's um, productivity suites around pages and numbers and Keynote, isn't it? That's the other piece of software. Uh, and you can actually use it on a PC uh, through a web browser, and it is free to use. Uh, obviously, you have a limited amount of space. Like most of these with the free offering, you only have a certain amount of space that you can use without paying for a premium copy. So that kind of looks at the, those kind of sets of software and we're going to look at all seven of these today and really think about how they could work for you and, and which one might actually be most suitable for your your business and the way that you're going to grow your business. So first of all let's address the, the first thing. Why would you choose to install a piece of software on your computer rather than using it through a web browser? Or vice versa, why would you prefer to use one in a web browser rather than installing it on your computer? Now, first of all, when you're using software that's purely through a web browser, you are tied to the internet, which means at any point in time, if you don't have internet connectivity, then you won't be able to access your documents and you won't be able to edit them, which means that <coughs> if you're on flights, specifically short haul flights, uh, or you're doing lots of traveling, then that connectivity might be a bit sporadic it might cause you a few problems uh, and as such you might not feel like you're able to really be productive in those what could otherwise be quite dead hours and um, so when you are choosing if you want to use internet connected applications do consider where you're going to be using it and when you're going to be using it and whether it's going to be appropriate 
Now, with the larger, thick client type applications, the Open Office, the Microsoft Office, and the Free Office uh, applications, then you have the freedom to be able to use these on your computer at any point in time. Now, with that freedom also comes responsibility because you've now taken on the responsibility to make sure you keep that software up to date. Otherwise, you might find it becomes insecure, it might become might have bugs in it that might cause you problems with stability, um, and it could be that you actually run out of space on your own computer or run out of processing power, which means it might start running slow or just not work at all. So you have the whole responsibility of looking after the whole environment that that application sits on, not just consume it through a web browser. So there are some key pros and cons there to think about. Now, what other kind of risks should we be looking at when it comes down to choosing a Office productivity application? So, so one thing we might be thinking about is who are we going to be exchanging files with? Because the reason why Microsoft Office is almost ubiquitous uh, across the whole of the corporate world is because as people are sharing documents, everybody has a copy of Microsoft Word. So they know the, the document that they're editing will look exactly the same on another person's screen. There is no kind of changes in the documents. Whereas using some of the other productivity tools, you might not always get that level of compatibility. Also, when you look at things such as the, the cloud-based tooling, uh, if you've got that, that file locked inside your environment, you have, to, you have to release it to be able to let other people look at it or let them into your environment, which means you may be creating yourself a security risk if you're not too sure on how to do this in a secure way. Whereas when you've used this with things like Microsoft Office on your desktop, you know that when you've sent the one file across, you've only sent the one file across to somebody else via email or via some file sharing software. Uh, and you can have a little bit more confidence and control if you're not too sure on how the security works. If you are a Mac user and you're only ever going to share with other Mac users, then what you might find is using the built-in uh, Apple tools around Pages, Keynote and Numbers would be perfectly fine because it has the same functionality. You still have to keep it up to date on things and you can still share it. It's only really if you want to use it from a PC point of view that you're locked into using it from a web browser. So that's a couple of things to think about. Uh, and again, from a, a Mac user's point of view, if you are using things like the, the uh, Apple Productivity Suite, then be aware that you might not be able to share these files with other people that are using other compute platforms, such as Google Docs or Microsoft Office. With the other platforms, they are usually a little bit easier with regards to sharing files. So um, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, FreeOffice, Google Docs, Zoho Docs, and the Apple um, Office Productivity Suite will all allow you to open Microsoft Office files. So the way of being able to send and receive files is fine. What you do find sometimes is there is a problem where the, the file may not look exactly the same or when you come to edit it, you might not have the same kind of features. So let's have a look and see what it actually means for us today. So I've uh, taken three selections of files and we're going to open up uh, each one of them, just show how it works in each of those productivity suites. So if we start with Microsoft Word, I'm going to open up a, a document that, we, uh, that I use called the Personal Performance Journal. And in here, as you can see, we've got a whole variety of things going on. You can see we have the, the headers, we've got images, we've got tables, we've got uh, in, embedded images in the background, we've got more tables, etc. We've got pagination, we've got uh, page numbers, uh, and this was developed in Microsoft Word, so it looks exactly as I expected it to. Uh, and the editor works in the same way as I would expect. You've got the tools across the top here with the Microsoft ribbon, and you can change the different tools as you're going through that. So I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with Microsoft Word. Now if we open that same document but now we use the uh, free office version which is a product called Text Maker. Okay. I open that same document up here. Uh, first of all what you can see is a few differences. The, there's a few extra lines showing you where the margins are and things but otherwise you've got the same formatting going on. You can see where the names are, you can see the images, we've got the tables in place, 
we've lost the uh, contact list and we've also got some things happening here with the pagination by which you, you're seeing things over spill into other pages so this isn't looking exactly the same way as it did in Microsoft Word so if I had sent my document to somebody who was using um, this product then they would see something different than what I expected them to so editing and working and collaborating with somebody else might be a bit of a problem Otherwise, the interface is very similar. You've got a ribbon up here with a number of different tools uh, that you can go through. Some of them are uh, as rich as what you use inside Microsoft Word. Some of the more advanced Word features are missing. Uh, so do be aware if you do use some of those advanced features, then it might not necessarily be the tool for you. Now, if we open that same document again, but we're going to look at this document now inside LibreOffice. Now I've chosen to use LibreOffice rather than LibreOffice and OpenOffice just simply because they're so very similar products uh, that to be able to review both doesn't actually make any sense. Um, so again looking at the document again it uh, has a few different formatting problems such as we, we're starting to lose the background images that it's not processed those correctly. Uh, we can see that uh, some of the pagination is slightly off so we've got overspill into other pages where we can find the tables aren't fitting onto one page anymore. So again, same kind of thing where if we're using this to collaborate with other people, that might cause us a few problems. Otherwise, different layout from the tooling. If anybody remembers the older style Microsoft Word, this pretty much follows uh, the way that that worked, where you had all of your tools in menus up here uh, and the, the, the tool bar kind of remained static. You don't have the, the ribbon in the LibreOffice functions. Now, while we're talking about the fact that um, editing this and collaborating with somebody else who's using a different tool can be a problem, if everybody inside your organization is using the same tool and you're not sharing with anybody outside your organization, then the reality is it doesn't actually make any difference if it's going to look different elsewhere because you're only ever going to use it internally. And therefore, you might think that this is perfectly acceptable to use um, as a tool. So we've looked quickly at the document writing and editing function and uh, now we're going to have a quick look at the spreadsheets. So we're going to start off with the classic Microsoft Excel uh, and in Excel here we've got a very simple table. Uh, we've got some columns in here so we can for, uh, filter these to say okay I want to see what's in book four of the Southern Fells. Anybody else like uh, catching Wainwrights? Hill, bit of hill walking anybody? Um, me and uh, Sarah and a few friends, we've got this uh, thing where we're going to try and do all 214 Wainwrights and uh, we're doing alright or so far. I think we've got about 14 or 15 done. Anyway, slight digression there. Um, so anyway, so this uh, kind of spreadsheet you can see very quickly we can filter. Uh, so all that kind of functionality works as you'd expect because it was built for Excel. Uh, we've got a table here so you can see the, the heights of the various different hills that you're going to be walking and you know it works exactly as we'd expect it to. Now if I open the same file inside uh, LibreOffice, so this is LibreOffice Calc, and we move this one across, come on, okay and again we've got the same kind of functionality we can see straight away we've got the um, slight difference in formatting but nothing major we can see all the different files in here so if we took um, filtered this by book 4 again we can see all of those that are in the southern bells uh, we can see the uh, calculations are, are working still so the V lookup between tables still works so everything you can expect from uh, the spreadsheet from basic functionality is there uh, when it comes down to looking at uh, tables again it formats the tables uh, you may need to change some of the formatting because again you can see the um, the way it's actually presented is different to how it was presented in Excel so again it's more of a, a, a collaboration feature uh, and you might find also that some features may be missing so for example um, uh, where are we? So if we look at trying to insert a pivot table from here, which is a way of being able to analyze the information you have, uh, that function is a little bit harder to find because it's, uh, there it is. So we've got there and, okay, so the way the pivot tables works is slightly different. So we can say, okay, I want to do it by book and I want us to calculate the names. Okay, and it's not really come up with anything. <laughs> so the fun of trying to use a tool that you don't use every day. 
So that's uh, LibreOffice Calc. Uh, if we do an open the same file inside the free office version, which is called Plan Maker, then what we can see is very similar to as in LibreOffice. So we've got the, uh, we can see around here, we can do the same uh, feature around filtering, so we can see what's going on there. Uh, the calculus, so we can see all the calculus, calculating fields are working. Uh, and again, we can see the, uh, the graph is being regenerated as we're putting the filters and things on. Uh, slight change again in the way that it's presented, because these are now horizontal rather than vertical. Uh, but we are back to having this kind of ribbon feel again, and a slightly different layout for the menus. But that's kind of a free cal uh, um, the free office version of, of Plan Maker. So again, very functional and certainly usable. And the fact is, you can use it for Excel files and use pretty much the same calculating fields. Uh, finally, we're going to look at uh, PowerPoint. So PowerPoint is probably one of the key ones as a presenter. If you guys recognise this, this was the slide deck from last week. Uh, we we're going through uh, talking uh, about uh, Brexit and supply chain, etc. So, as, as you can see, all the functions you'd expect from um, uh, PowerPoint are available to you. Uh, and if you go into quickly doing a uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, it features exactly the same as you'd expect it. So, you've got the the PowerPoint's presentation. You've got the um, oops. Where are we? Yeah, so we've got the PowerPoint presentation, and if you look on this screen here, this is the presenter mode where you can see the countdown time, you can see where the next slides are, etc., and work out what's going on. So, so PowerPoint works the way that you PowerPoint, expect PowerPoint to work. Uh, if we then look at the same file but using uh, LibreOffice Impress. This is where it starts to get a little bit different and it shoots off to another screen. Um, first of all, the layout is slightly different. You've got your tooling in a slightly different position, which is very similar to how LibreOffice Calc and LibreOffice documents worked. Um, also, one of the key things with this is as you start to go into the slideshow, what you'll find is it runs a lot slower. When you're going through key presses, you need to be very uh, uh, conscious that uh, it, it's going to take you a moment or two to go through each of the key presses and in fact it's completely appeared on a completely different screen there so that's uh, LibreOffice Impress if we look at um, where's the other one so we will open up with the free office presentations and then again we kind of have this lag on the way the, the application actually works. You can go through, it generally looks pretty much the same as what you had inside um, PowerPoint. It's just a lot slower to go through and go through the document itself. And it, it's even slower when you go through and, and do it in presentation mode as well. So certainly something um, just be aware of if you are going to use this product for presentations, etc. So if we come back to, to, to where we started and actually think about well, actually, uh, what's the recommendation here. So for me, the recommendation is that uh, I would recommend using Microsoft Office and think about it in the way of, you know, don't, um, you know, don't argue about the shovels when you're uh, digging for gold. So at the end of the day, uh, you, 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 that's what you're doing. You're trying to make sure that you've got the right tools in place to do the right job that you need to do. Okay, so hopefully that kind of gives us a, a quick tour of Office Productivity Suites and kind of my thoughts on what you should or shouldn't be using when you think about that as a, a business and make sure you've got something that you can use. Now, the next part we're going to look at, the next topic was really around motivation and how can we really keep motivated, especially in those times when you feel that things are, are not necessarily always going your way. How can you, you know, be enthused? How can you push things forwards? And, you know, it's difficult. It really is difficult because you have to keep single minded in the idea that you, you want to push things forward. You want to do something better. You're building something big. Your why has to be huge. Uh, and for that, what I was thinking is how can we help you with this because this question's come up a few times now in the group is how can we be even more motivated so 
what I was thinking is, you know, for my gift to you for the end of 2019 to get you ready for 2020 is to invite you to, to come on a free web class to look at the personal performance process. Now, what is the personal performance process? Uh, the personal performance process is what I do on a daily basis, which keeps me on track, motivated, and knowing what I'm going to be doing next. Because at the end of the day, you know, part of your motivation has to be in a way of being able to get things done, be able to improve yourself, improve your business, make things happen. And this personal performance process really does look at it at the personal level and how you can become more performant in your own life. And we go through and we look at like seven key areas and we break those down and make, make sure that you have a plan for each of those areas to, to make yourself even better in 2020. Now, um, for the web class, I'm going to be doing this live uh, on Zoom on the 31st of December. So that's the last day of the year, just to make sure it's extra exciting. Uh, it'll be a 10 o'clock start, uh, finished in at 12. And we will go through each of the key areas really to get you started. Uh, and you'll be working through your own personal performance journal, uh, which I will be sending you via the email after you've registered. So what you what are you going to learn when you come on the personal performance web class? Well, first of all, you're going to learn how to achieve your optimum performance so that you're setting yourself up for success time and time again. You're going to be able to identify what will be the, make the biggest impact on what you're doing so you can propel yourself forwards uh, with vigor and with vitality and you can make sure you've got that motivation behind you. You're going to be building your plan on how you will achieve more so that you can turn your goal from an aspiration into reality. You're going to learn how to improve yourself daily, even when you're busy, because uh, you're going to have the skills that you will need to make that happen, to make a plan, to make you achieve. And you're going to be setting yourself up for success for your business and for yourself by having the resources available and becoming the recognised change maker who gets things done. Now, I usually deliver this uh, to C-level corporates and managers, etc., and charge it out at 997. But today, I'm going to be giving it to you guys as my gift to you, free of charge. Uh, be able to just join us, nothing. I've set up a special registration just for members of this group. So if you guys go to go.martinsharp.com forward slash web class gift uh, and fill in your details of your name, your second name, and your email address, you'll be sent through the your ticket for the web class and you'll be able to come and join us and really be able to, I'm giving you this great gift that I use on a daily basis that really helps me perform at the top of my game. So please go to go.martinsharp.com for your free web gift that I've given you today. Right, so let's have a look. Have we got any questions? Anything else that's come on the list now? Oh, hi Stan, good to see you there. Brilliant. Uh, well, um, hi Louise. Brilliant to see that. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this one. Hi Mohammed. Is this free? Is this compatible with Microsoft Word? Yes, they are free and yes, they are compatible with Microsoft Word. Those are the ones I showed you. In fact, um, what I forgot to show you, and a good job you reminded me there Mohammed, is um, there is the, the web versions. Because I went through the ones that were installed on your computer, didn't go through the web versions. So you can actually get a free version of Microsoft Office if you want to actually have the legit version of Microsoft Office. Um, and if you go to the, the office.com, you're able to access Word for the web, Excel for the web, and PowerPoint for the web, which is fully compatible with the uh, off offline versions as well. So you can share them and it renders in exactly the same way. So you don't have that compatibility issue. Um, one thing to be aware of is that because these are web versions of those tools, they aren't as feature rich as the, the full tools that you would get to install on your computer, but they are free after all. Um, we talked about the Zoho tools, so again you can come onto the Zoho website, zoho.com, and again they do a free version uh, for small teams, so you've got Zoho Sheet, Zoho Docs, Zoho Show, and uh, if you go in the pricing side of it, as you can see, you can have up to five people in your team working for free uh, with up to about a one gigabyte file of it, which for many people would probably be okay. Uh, Google Docs is obviously the productivity tool many people know about. So you've got the Docs, the Sheets, 
and the um, slides. Again, when, when it comes down to co um, collaborating with some people, actually this is a really good way of doing it because you can all edit things at the same time. Um, you can also do that on Microsoft Word um, Office as well, but it's a little bit more tricky. And finally, like we were talking about, you do have uh, access to the iCloud suite as well, even from a PC. Uh, and these are the, the, the free of charge tools. You can go in here, uh, open up your files as if it was on a Mac. Uh, and be able to edit them. It will open up uh, Office files and it will open up the Mac files as well. So if you receive a file from somebody who is using a Mac and sync it with Pages or with um, Keynote or anything, you can use this to be able to quickly edit those files and change them and even download them if you want as Microsoft Office files. So thank you for that. I did forget to mention that one. Hi, Eugenia Leach. Great to see you on the, the Q&A this evening. So hopefully we've gone through and we've answered all the questions. And I'm just going to give everybody a minute to see if any more pop up. Otherwise, hope you guys have really enjoyed the show. I've really tried to put a lot of thought into the analysis of those kind of productivity tools, specifically thinking about what it would be that you guys would be looking for when you're going to be starting to use them. If you do have any further questions about them, then please reach out. I'm quite happy to answer those either in the group or personally. Uh, and again, really looking forward to seeing you guys on the web class uh, in, the, the, in, the, in the end of the year. I think that's going to be an absolutely fantastic couple of hours. You guys are going to be able to see exactly what I do that keeps me working at top performance all the time so at the moment I don't think there's any more questions come through so I hope you've really enjoyed the evening looking forward to seeing you on the next live Q&A session bye bye for now